Here we go. Now, you tell me, Bengals fans at home, when I think of the Cleveland Browns, and I love Cleveland, Ohio, I have to say it. I love the suburbs. I love going to the town. I love the people. I've been there hundreds of times in my life. I have really good friends that live up there. Uh, I think it's an incredible sports town. Does this guy not look like a Brownies guy right here? Blake, you <laughs> are a Browns guy. You're all dripped up and all your, your – that's a new word around here. It might not be new to you. It's brand new to an old guy like me. But you're all dripped up and ready to go for Monday night, right? Oh, I can't wait, man. Uh, even though the Brown season hasn't gone the way I wanted it to go, it, it's it's the same thing for Browns uh, every week. Sunday, you hate them. By Tuesday, you're kind of talking yourself into, uh, <laughs> you know, hey, maybe, you know, if four other teams lose, you know, we're still in the playoff hunt. And then by Sunday, it's, hey, I'll meet you in the Muni, Muni lot. So I can't wait for Monday night. It's going to be great. Uh it's always a good time up at First Energy, too, on primetime. I was at the Thursday night game a few weeks ago, and it was a crazy atmosphere. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere. Great stadium right there on the lake. Um, I continue to say, Blake, you tell me if I'm wrong here. I think the Bengals are facing a desperate team. I made the comment before the game last week that if the Browns lose to the Ravens, which they did, but I made a comment if the Browns lost to the Ravens and the Bengals, they're done. In my opinion, they're done. Um, now, there's a lot of football left, so you can debate that. But, but do you sense that this is a desperation game for the Browns? Uh, I know it at least is for us fans. It feels like a desperation game. Um, I'm hoping the players are buying into that mentality just because, like you said, and I completely agree, if we lose this game – I mean, you can make the argument the season's done already, even though there's a ton of football to play. If we were to lose this game, it not only puts us behind in the division, now you're looking at we got the Bills coming up, we got the Bucks coming up, even though I know they've been struggling. We got Miami coming up with all their receivers. There's not a lot of uh, wins coming up for the Browns, I think, uh, at least until Deshaun gets back. So I hope they're coming out desperate. And I think the one thing Browns fans are kind of hanging their hat on is – for some reason, we've had the Bengals number the last couple of years, yep, yep. even though you can make the argument that they, they've been more talented, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, but for some reason, we've just kind of had their number. So I think that's what, at least Browns fans, that's what we're putting our hope in because so far this year, not a lot says that we're going to stop your offense. Or, well, 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 I mean, well, honestly, I'm more worried about your defense. Well, I, and look, we'll get into both those things in a second. But, but, but I want to ask you, where are you – um, you know, after the game against the Ravens, I, I, I'm reading all the, you know, Cleveland.com and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and I'm looking at, you know, the writers from the athletic covering the team and, and Mary Kay up there is totally on her game. Um, where are you on the whole Stefanski thing? Because, you know, down here, Bengals and Browns obviously haven't played yet. And you read all the time uh, where, you know, Chubb's only carrying the ball 14 times. 17 times, whatever it might be. And Jacoby Brissett is throwing the ball 27 times, 34 times, 35 times. Where are you and what's the vibe of the fan base on the whole play calling thing and Kevin Stefanski is the coach? So I, I think it's actually pretty split. Um, you have some people who – just want to give Chubb the ball 40 times a game. And then you have other people who are, I think are a little bit more realistic. I'm kind of one of these people. Chubb, I think, is second in the league in touches, um, first in yards, I believe. He's on pay. If he were to get 20 carries a game, that's 340 carries for the season. Only two running backs have hit that, I think, in like the last eight to 10 years is Derrick yep. Henry and Le'Veon Bell. Um, you're probably not going to get. 340 carries a season. If you if you were to get 25, that's over 400 touches for the year. I mean, we have a, a backup running back in Cream Hunt who's supposed to be a top 10 back. We have him for a reason. I don't like the idea of just running Nick Chubb into the ground, especially his entire career. He's never been a bell cow back. Even going back to Georgia, he split carries with Sony Michelle. So he's never been a guy who's gotten 25, 30 carries a game. I don't think you can just all of a sudden ask him to do that. And I just think Browns fans are focusing on the wrong side of the ball. The offense hasn't been the issue for the Cleveland Browns this year. It's been the defense and the special teams. Um, now, where I come in on Stefanski, and I think a lot of Browns fans are, is 
he seems to be too much of just an offensive coordinator right now. You know, the offense seems to play well, even with having Jacoby be quarterback, a career journeyman. But he's got to he's got to take the reins on the special teams and the defense because I think the defense is thirty first. Last I looked, special teams was bottom half of the league. They've cost us multiple games this year. I mean that Jets game, it hasn't happened in two thousand games, yeah. and the Browns were the last team to lose a game like that. So yeah. I, I want I've been a big Stefanski supporter his entire time in Cleveland, but I think his seat I won't say his seat's hot, and he's definitely I think it would take something crazy for him to not be back next year. Um, but I think his seat's getting warmer, it's, and if it tail spins out of control and you start hearing about ugly locker room problems, then I think it starts getting a little bit more dicey. Um, I don't know if any Cleveland Browns fan will ever admit what I'm about to ask you, but I'm going to ask you anyway uh, because we have Zim Hude. You know who Zim is? No, I do not. Okay, you got to check out Zim Hude. He, he's a lot like you and, and some of the others that, that follow their team, and he, he's the man here in, 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 that follows the Bengals. Great dude, regular on the program. He swears up one side and down the other that every team that plays the Bengals should be scared to death of their offense. As a Browns fan, are you scared of the Bengals' offense? Tell the truth. <laughs> A hundred percent. I think <laughs> I think anybody who tells you that they're not scared is they're just kind of being a fan uh, because what's not to be afraid of? I think Joe Burrow is one of the best quarterbacks in the game. Um, we actually, you know, a lot of people up here like Joe Burrow with his Ohio State connections. Yep. Um, Jamar Chase is amazing. Won me a fantasy league last year, so I did appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I mean, their third wide receiver would be uh, at least a two on most teams in the league. Uh, and Joe Mixon's a good running back. So, and they improved the offensive line. And I think the Bengals, they started a little slow and people were like, are oh, they having a Super Bowl hangover? Well, the last month they've been clicking, especially the last couple of weeks. So I think I'd be, we'd be stupid not to be afraid of their offense. Why do you say, I mean, around here, we, we pay attention to it. The, the fact that, you know, the Bengals have, have done something that hasn't been done in decades. And that's a, that their defense has not allowed a second half touchdown the entire year. Seven games they've played. They've not given up one second-half touchdown. And obviously, you've taken notice of that up in Cleveland. Yeah, I think it's gone under the radar. And I was watching before you guys had me had, uh, on about some of the guys you added, like culture fit guys yep. that the Bengals have done, guys like Vaughn Bell and stuff like that. Trey Hendrickson, I think, is extremely underrated at rushing the passer. He was a huge acquisition for you guys last year. And I'm – of. All the things I'm scared of in this game, it's Trey Hendrickson against Jed Wills. If if they line him up on Jed Wills consistently, I think it could be a long night for Jacoby Brissett. So they just they get after the passer well. They, they tackle. Um, I think they're, a lot of people get enamored with the offensive side of the ball, and rightfully so. But the defense, like you said, no second-half touchdowns. I mean, they're, they're playing complementary football like not many teams in the NFL are right now. Um, so – I mean, they're, they're just playing well. So do the Browns pull off the shocker Monday night? What do you think? So the, the realist in me says no, but the Browns fan in me says, of course, they're going to. Monday night at home, under the lights, Halloween. desperate, got to get a win. Halloween is going to be a crazy atmosphere. They know, I mean, you win this game and you're still an uphill battle, but things are still alive. You lose this game and, you know, you start – thinking about next season already probably. So I want to say the Browns win a tight one. The defense comes out, plays well. I think a lot hinges on if Denzel Ward plays. He yep. seems he, – he matches up decent with Jamar Chase. I think Jamar Chase even said in the offseason he was one of his tougher matchups. So if Denzel Ward plays, I think we can hopefully slow down the offense just a little bit and maybe win a, a tight one in the low 20s, something like that. Okay. All right. Hey, my friend, thank you so much for joining us uh, last minute. We appreciate you checking your email. So uh, thanks so yeah, much no for problem. the time. And have fun at the game on Monday night out in that Muni lot. That's big league lot to hang out and do some tailgating in. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Great to have you with us. So uh, there you have it. Uh, well, you know, we've been saying on the show, this is a desperate Cleveland team. Paul, you say they stink. I say they don't. 